Tasya jati mit chanti badina kechi devahi abhutasya pare dira vivadanta parasparam. Translation by Gambirananda. For some disputants indeed postulate the birth of a pre existing thing. Otherwise, ones, while disputing among themselves, Postulate the birth of what does not pre exist. Alternate translation by Nikilananda. Quarreling among themselves, some disputants postulate that an existing entity undergoes evolution, whereas other disputants, proud of their wisdom, maintain that evolution proceeds from a non existing entity. How the dualists contradict each other is being stated. Kechit eva vadinaha. Some disputants, for example, the Sankhyas, Ichanti, postulate, Jatim, the birth, Bhutasya, of an existing thing. But not so do all the dualists, for there are apare, others, namely the Vaisheshikas and the Nayayakas who are diraha, wise, that is to say, proud of their wisdom, and who, while vivadantaha, quarreling, postulate the birth abhutasya of a non-existing thing. All dualists believe in the act of creation or evolution. The idea is that they want to conquer each other through disputation. But all they actually achieve by this argumentation is the refutation of causality itself. The quarreling among the dualists also highlights the non-argumentative nature of the Advaitins by comparison. Text 4 Bhutang na jayate king chid abhutang naiva jayate Vivadanto dvaya hievam ajating kyapayantite. A thing that already exists does not pass into birth, and a thing that does not pre exist cannot pass into birth. These people, while disputing thus, are really non dualists, and they thus reveal the absence of birth. Alternate translation. A thing that already exists does not pass into birth. A thing that does not pre-exist cannot pass into birth. Thus, disputing among themselves, they, as a matter of fact, tend to establish a jatavada, the Advaita view that the world is unborn, or the absolute non-evolution of what exists. Kinchit, anything that is bhūtam, pre-existing, na jayate, does not pass into birth, just because it exists, as in the case of the self. While speaking thus, the holder of the view that the effect does not exist before its birth refutes the view of the Sankhya, who says that the effect, pre-existing in the cause, takes birth. This shloka expresses the view of the followers of the Nayayaka and Vaisheshika systems. According to them, an existing entity cannot be born as an effect. If an entity already exists, it is not produced again. This view can be stated thus. A cannot produce B, as A is always A and B is always B. It may be contended that A plus C may produce B. Therefore, C is something which does not exist in the cause A. Therefore, the effect B does not come out of the cause A. Similarly, the Sankhya, too, while speaking thus, Adbhutam, the non-existing, Naeva Jayate, 
can never be born because of the very fact that it does not exist, refutes the birth of a non-existing thing, as held by those who believe in the non-existence of the effect before production, the view of the followers of the Sankhya system. According to them, the existing entity cannot undergo any annihilation, nor can the non-existing entity pass into existence. The existing entity is existent at all times, past, present, and future. A non-existing entity, such as the child of a barren woman, is always non-existent. By birth, the Sankhyas mean manifestation, and by death, they understand the return of the effect into the cause. The sesame seed produces oil. It means that oil, already existent in the seed, manifests itself in the form of the effect when the seed, the cause, is pressed. But one cannot get oil by pressing sand, as oil is never present in the sand. The clay which contains in potential form the pot manifests the pot. Again, the destruction of the pot means it's going back into the original cause, that is, the clay. There is no absolute destruction of the pot. While vivadantaha, quarreling, these dvayaha, dualists, really walk into the camp of the non-dualists by refuting each other's views about the birth of the pre-existing or the non-pre-existing. Kyapayanti, revealed by implication, ajatim, absence of birth itself. Why? Both theories are based upon causality, but by refuting each other, they in fact refute causality itself. For if an existing thing is produced from an existing cause, as the Sankhyas profess, then there cannot be, in truth, any causal relation. Similarly, it is absurd to say that a positive thing can be produced by a non-existing cause. Thus, the entire theory of causality is refuted, establishing a jatavada, the Advaita view that there is no act of creation or manifestation. Namaste. So some young fool took a pot shot at Trump. Now, watch. Both sides, or all three sides, or five, or however many there are, will go into full-on story-generating mode. What is the cause? The Democrats will blame the Repubs. The Repubs will blame the Democrats. And, you know, there'll be a thousand or countless numbers of stories trying to find out the cause, why this happened. And you know what? It doesn't matter. This creation exists beyond cause and effect. Cause and effect is something we make up with our limited intelligence. The universe is a creation of an intelligence as far beyond ours as our intelligence is beyond that of an ant maybe even more. So, you know, if you try to explain to an ant what you're doing and why you're doing it, the ant is just going to go, where's the sugar? <laughs> he can't comprehend it. And similarly, we can't comprehend why, you know, the cause of this universe and why it's set up the way it is. It's so annoying, for example, when a two-year-old or three-year-old child discovers why. Uh, usually it comes right after they discover no. <laughs> they understand that the best way to annoy an adult is to keep asking why. Because there really is no answer. We make up these stories about why things happen, what the cause is. Because of you, you know, it is even in songs. 
So try to understand all this brouhaha about this kind of cause is that kind of cause or this effect comes from this thing or that thing. It's all bullshit. Complete stories, fabrications, like the Buddha called them, Shankara. Fabrications made up because we want to feel we understand, isn't it? But there is no understanding of that which just is what it is. Like Brahman, for example. Brahman just is what it is. There's no why. There's even no how. It just is. And actually, the same is true of us because we are identical with Brahman. We are Jivatma. And he is Paramatma. So we inhere the qualities of Brahman within ourselves because we are basically him covered by Upadis. What's an Upadi? It's like a filter, like an audio filter. filtering out certain frequencies. And in our case, of course, it filters out almost all the frequencies <laughs> because of the limited capacity of our brains and intelligence. Also, not to mention the senses. For example, our sense of vision has a very narrow spectrum, about two and a half octaves of frequency of light. But light itself, we know, has more than 12 octaves huh? from far infrared all the way up to, you know, x-rays. So we can only see a tiny amount of what's actually there. Same with hearing, smell, taste, touch, what it, and especially our intelligence, our thinking. Huh? So, you know, People criticize AI for hallucinating and making up explanations when you ask it a question that doesn't really know the answer to. Well, human beings are just as bad. Huh? We make up stories to answer even anticipated questions. As you say, why did you do that? <laughs> well, it seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> The real answer to all these questions is that there is no such thing as cause and effect. Cause and effect is simply a rationalization that we concoct to make ourselves seem smarter than we really are. Oh, and there's also a good market in explanations that give you some advantage in politics or power or acquisition or wealth, business, like that. But what to speak of in relationships? Oh, my God. Huh? Did you ever try to have a discussion with a relationship partner about why uh, such and such went wrong in our relationship? You know? And it's all about taking or making the blame. Either accepting it yourself or projecting it on the other person that you are at fault. You are the cause of this problem in our relationship. You know, those conversations never resolve. And the more that you try to bring this kind of thing up in a relationship, the more the relationship is in trouble, isn't it? And it usually never recovers. This is because... It's a made-up story. Which are we going to accept? My story or your story? Huh? What is going on? The discussion is irresolvable. It always leads to further conflict, further bitter feelings, and so on. Does anybody have any experience 
of ever convincing someone else that they're the one who's at fault, uh, when they're blaming you, that you're the one? Never. And not in my experience anyway. So people don't really believe these stories. They just use them like a hammer to pound on the other people or person that is the target of their uh, conversation or their analysis of what's going on. This is human nature. But we can get beyond this by dropping all these stories, accepting things the way they are, because after all, the universe is already created. Whatever we do is not going to change anything. In fact, whatever we do is already part of that creation. <laughs> so the best thing to do is just drop it. Appreciate the beauty of this artwork, the created world. And meanwhile, meditate, contemplate, and attain the realization of Brahman because that is the highest enlightenment. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya. <laughs>